Hello YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines from The Moving Icon and I am here to tell you about um, a small photo convention we have in Quebec City in this small town. It's a small town so it's not a big convention, it's basically a place where uh, one photo distributor hosts this thing and they try to just sell the most product they can in a weekend. Um, but what is really cool about it is that the date of the convention happens right after Photokina. So any companies announcing stuff at Photokina, normally by the time we get to our event, we actually have the prototypes in our hands, which is kind of cool. So I had the chance to look at the Sony A6500, the Panasonic FZ2500, and a new line of Sigma lens that are, lenses that are coming out that look absolutely amazing. Today I want to talk about how it went when I looked at the uh, Sony A6500, so stay tuned and watch. <laughs> So this event is held in the city of Quebec. Uh, it's a small event. It happens not far from my house. So when I when I did go there today, I basically just got my umbrella out because it was the weather was just completely crappy. I went to the event. I said I'm going to walk in, maybe stay 20 minutes, but I stayed a lot longer because there were a lot of cameras I was interested in. And being an old Sony A6000 owner was the uh, A6500 and the A6300, both cameras I have not touched yet. Um, but I did own the A6000, uh, so, and, and you know, it's a fascinating camera, so I wanted to go look at it. So I saw that the A6500 was there. Uh, and also, I went to go congratulate the people at. What the fuck is that here? I went to go congratulate the people at Sigma for their fantastic lens quality and prices. I own the Sigma Art 1.4 uh, and I love it. This thing is just an amazing portrait lens and I just wanted to go tell them. So I went to the booth and said, hey guys, thank you very much. It's an excellent lens. And they said, hey, why don't you look at our new 85 millimeter 1.4 and uh, they also have a new zoom lens out and a new sport lens out and these things look absolutely amazing i will talk about the specs in another video so when i went to the a the sony booth i was looking around and then i saw this a6500 the actual prototype and i asked the guy uh, a lot of questions and here's what he had to say can it take complete stop on that hi this is jacques Gaines from the moving icon and i am here with the sony a6500, a prototype pre 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 production. Yes. There you go. So it's just a body of shell with probably some stuff they're working on now, firmware updates or whatever to make sure that it actually works well. What we get on this camera that's more than the other, like the 6300, is touchscreen, IBIS, in body image stabilization. Uh, what else? Correct me. Bluetooth. Yes, we get. Actually, the GPS data. Okay. Yes, that's cool. I don't know how that could be better because it did have Wi-Fi already. It does. Yeah, it does. It has a Wi-Fi like all the others, say 6000 and 6300 as well, but Bluetooth as well. Uh, other things I should point out, maybe? Metering modes, new metering modes. Uh, new metering modes. Considering highlights. Uh huh. Uh, there is new uh, AF selection with the touch screen. Yes. AF selection with the touchscreen and adjustable speeds, I believe, on the speed at which you point to another thing and it racks. Alright. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else I should mention? Uh, there's a ton of little details. But little details. Yes, for the EBIS, they, they told me that what they did was they totally redesigned the shutter system and how it would work so that they could fit it. Because I don't know if you realize by looking at the size of this camera, it is a small sucker. And they put Ibis in there, so just that is an engineering feat in and itself. And they re redesigned the whole shutter system, and well, they're still giving you 11 FPS? Correct. 11 FPS, uh, like the A6000 and A6300, which are mind blowing. Not a lot of fun when it comes to triage. <laughs> and you know what? The buffer is much bigger than the side chip. Yes. There is uh, 300 shots of buffer. Yes, that's another thing. It's A6300, the buffer, the actual buffer, is a lot bigger. How many shots? 
300 in JPEG and more than 100 in, in RAW. 300 in JPEG and more than 100 in RAW. And I can tell you with confidence, working with a Canon in RAW, your buffer gets full pretty quick. Pretty darn quick. So that's about it. And uh, listen, uh, thank you very much. Pierre. Pierre helped me out here at Sony. He's with Sony. So that's how it happened at uh, the event for the Sony A6000. Uh, the people at the Sony booths were great, they were fantastic, but I really gotta talk about the Sony A6000, the A6 line, that whole line. Now, there's, as you just saw, there's a lot of cool specs on this new thing, and make no mistake, the A6000 line is a marvel of engineering. They pack so many specs inside this camera, it isn't even funny. There, it, there's fantastic specs, fantastic quality. Um, you know, they have 4K um, video on this with no pixel binning. I don't know if you realize, but the quality of the actual video you get out of a sensor that actually interprets the information like that is nay shy of gorgeous it's just beautiful so there's a lot of stuff that's great on these cameras but for some reason when i asked them about the whole overheating issue they're really skirty and there's not much they can say the sony rep that was there believe it or not actually talked to me and boasted about the new setting they have and it's a setting that basically tells you if you're ready to tolerate more heat we can let your camera uh, film a bit longer. To me, it's like someone who has a broken leg with an open fracture and you put a big, huge bandage on top. Sure, you cover the, the wound, but there's still a broken leg underneath. For some reason, they feel there's more of a priority to get in-body image stabilization in this camera than it is to take care of the overheating issue. And that bothers me a bit. I don't think it's a good idea. I think they should deal with the fact that it overheats. That they sell this camera as a camera that films gorgeous footage, but to think that you can actually go over 20 minutes of footage is almost a pipe dream. I mean, it can happen maybe once, but the next time you start shooting, you're gonna end up into trouble. So it's something I think Sony should deal with, and they haven't dealt with that with the A6500, and it bothers me. So for most filmmakers, anyone who films a bit, and you know, uh, some people talk to me, some, I get a lot of people telling me that, well, I only shoot very short clips and I do a lot of work in my editing. And I agree that you don't always do long clips, but when you do film a bit, it does happen that you need those long clips. And it's a limitation that is huge. It's enormous. It's an enormous limitation that we have when we're working with an, any Sony A6 line. Now, you guys, anyone who's looked at my channel will realize that the, the whole flip out screen thing unnerves me. It bothers me. And I think that the people who own the patent on the whole flip screen thing charge a whole hell of a lot of money and it's not easy to get. So whenever companies like Sony and Fuji can get rid of that and not have that, that uh, flip screen, they don't use it. On a small camera, if you tout yourself having a small camera with a lot of features, buy Talking about small, you talk about filming yourself because you talk about bloggers, vloggers, and uh, people who are going to shoot footage on this camera and want to see themselves while they, sh while they shoot. Therefore, to me, it makes no sense to not bring in a flip screen. Sony, a Sony, please listen to me. The Sony A6700 or the Sony A7000, please bring out a flip out screen so that we can look at ourselves a flip out articulating screen. I'm ready to pay the extra price. I went to the Fuji booth and at the Fuji booth, I saw a company that's really hungry with great innovations and great ideas. Their X-T2 is just a marvel. It's just a beautiful camera. They address a lot of the old school people and they address the new school people. They take old school vintage and they bring it into the new school 
convenience that's possible. How have they solved this whole overheating issue? Because most mirrorless cameras have this problem. They've come out with a battery grip. The battery grip gives you more features, takes the batteries out of the body and puts them into another section. The camera does get hot, the representative told me, but you've never got that, that warning that says we had to stop filming because the camera just got too hot. That brings me to another point. Why isn't Sony with the A6 line dealing with some sort of battery grip solution? Because what it says is that if you're a small guy who takes snapshots, the camera as is is fine. But if you want to be a pro, because we do offer such fantastic video quality, we'll give you the option of buying a battery grip that you put in, you stick it onto that model, and all of a sudden you have a lot of professional features, and we take care of the overheating issue. So in the end, my conclusion is this. Make no mistake, the Sony A6500 with in-body image stabilization, 11 frames per second, no pixel binning at 4K, and super high quality photo images is a spectacular engineering feat. What you have to do is you have to sell the idea that we're gonna make your workflow easier. Right now, as it stands, the A6500 to me is still just a whole sack of a lot of specs that other cameras don't have. And it's good. It's great. You have all these great things in this small body. But in the end, you just have a bunch of specs. When it comes time to use that camera and actually take the images, because that's the main goal in all this, is to get the images, you can't do it. You can't do it with this thing because there's always some sort of limitation. So in the end, I think Sony is a victim of how good they are. These cameras are amazing. They really are. And they are a victim of that. So that's all I had to say about this uh, uh, event, the new model, the A6500. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. For my high quality stuff, check out Behance. Uh, if you'd like to support me, go to my Patreon page. I'll, give, I'll leave the link down below. Uh, if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the bottom. If you want to keep in cahoots with what I do, please subscribe. And don't forget, everybody, keep on making something from nothing. Mm -hmm.